Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and welcome to Thoughts On. This is a series where I analyze games and give my opinions on them. Today, we'll be looking at Max Payne 3. Max Payne 3 is an interesting game to say the least, as it is completely different from its predecessors. Setting itself in an entirely new area as opposed to New Jersey, was developed by Rockstar Games as opposed to Remedy Entertainment, and suffered multiple delays due to the success of other titles such as the Grand Theft Auto franchise. Another reason for the hiatus was because Max Payne 2 didn't sell as well as the original did, and since Vice City came out the same year in 2003, there was no chance that Max would get a threequel shortly after, so Rockstar decided to put it to the side until the time was right for a third game to drop. The game finally came out in 2012, and more than a decade later, this game continues to surprise me out of the water with its tight gameplay, excellent level design, and a character that you grow to love from the moment the game starts right up to the end. It also garnered controversy at launch, portraying Sao Paulo in the wrong way, Max appearing shaven as opposed to having the old hairstyle that he's always rocked, and using Portuguese and Mexican voice actors as opposed to using Brazilian actors. I've played through this game about three times now, two times on console, and for the first time and the sake of this video, on PC. And it never fails to disappoint me whenever I decide to jump back into it after a while because it always feels different in that I can always change something up with my playstyle or just ramp up the difficulty if I so please. A quick disclaimer, this is my first Max Payne game and I'm yet to play the first two games. Now I know what you're thinking, Pep, why haven't you played the first two games? Are you trying to commit a crime? Honestly, no, and it's nothing to do with not wanting to play it. I just haven't been bothered to, seemingly because of its age and Remedy and Rockstar's entertainment of remaking the two games, so I'm more than happy to wait until that comes. That being said, I may end up playing them anyway just to experience what it's like since the comic book sequences have always been interesting to me and the gameplay looks so damn fun that I'd probably have a blast if I just hopped into it. Just wanted to clear that out in case I don't compare too much to the first two games, though I am aware of the games and their stories. Lastly, I'll only be reviewing the single player aspect of Max Payne 3, as the multiplayer didn't interest me at all, presumably due to its dead player base. If you enjoy the video, like, subscribe and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? Max Payne 3 starts off with a broken down Max arriving in Brazil for a fresh start, entering his apartment, grabbing himself a drink and doing the things he's been doing since the day he lost his wife and baby, drinking alcohol and consuming lots of painkillers. Rockstar doesn't hesitate to show Max at his absolute weakest and it's through the use of distortion and chromatic aberration effects that further illustrate this. Although, there was something that bothered me with this new narrative. You see, at the end of Max Payne 2, Max had finally learned to accept his wife and kid's death, pushed everything that was negative out of his way and moved on with his life. Even though there is a graphic novel series titled Max Payne 3 The Complete Series that details the events before Max Payne 3 and sheds light on his past, there's no defined path or idea on how any of this negativity came back to haunt him in the ass. Maybe it was a picture of his family that he saw at the start that kept reminding him of the bad times and forced him to drink. Maybe it was withdrawal symptoms from leaving the country that he had been in all of his life. I've never fully understood how or why Rockstar decided to go with this sad narrative that has been Max for every game, but hey, it's what we got and I'm okay with it. Because Max has been through so much and it's bound to come back to you sooner or later even when you've moved on from tragic events like the ones he's been through. After becoming a hit target by the mob back in Jersey for killing a well-known figure's son, Max gets offered a job by Rob Passos to work private security for a wealthy family known as the Broncos in Sao Paulo, which almost everyone had it out for, given that they're a rich family in a poor country. The family consists of five members which are Marcelo, Fabiana, Rodrigo, Victor, and Giovanna. These characters have very short time periods throughout the game and have their own motives and quirks, so it isn't explained in as much detail with the exception of Rodrigo who I feel like has good moments in the game whenever he is given screen time as he shows moments of vulnerability and stress, similar to how we see Max whenever he's back at the crib drinking his life away. As the game progresses, the family slowly falls apart one by one, starting with Fabiana getting kidnapped, which acts as the catalyst for the story's events, in which many things happen like paying a ransom that goes sour, protecting the Bronco office from being raided by mercenaries, going neck deep into the favelas as a gringo. The family's story for the most part is serviceable at best and doesn't catch my attention as they're not really interesting and only serve as extra meat. The only character that I mess with in the entire game is Passos since he's been a good friend of Max, has character development and changes as a person by the time you say goodbye to him. All the other characters have one moment to shine then they're just gone for good. And they serve as extra meat because it doesn't compare to the game's actual story which is Max's journey. 
Throughout the game, Max speaks in retrospect, recalling all the events that happened during the game, and it's easily one of the game's strongest points. Max remains with the same negative, greasy, and monotone voice that he's always had from the originals, but now with extra profanity, which I'm not sure if that was a design decision or a result of him being around Passos too much, but nevertheless, it's freaking fantastic. Kudos to James McCaffrey for going out of his way to do all that he can to get the role, because Rockstar had considered not bringing James in seemingly due to Max's old age. But let's be honest, without James, Max Payne isn't Max Payne, and he embodied him in every single way, alongside doing motion capture for the character too. Max has plenty of great one-liners, dialogue, and funny moments that it's just really freaking good. I don't know what else to say here. Rockstar even took the time to record a dozen lines for when he picks up freaking painkillers. How good is that? Chances were I wasn't going to be alive much longer. So why not get a buzz on? Luckily, I wasn't the only cop with a pill problem. About the only friend I had left in that town. Figured I'd bag those up for evidence. Here's a few of my favorite quotes from the game. This was it. My easy retirement money. My blood-stained 401k. A chance to drink for free while chaperoning socialites around town and making sure the poor people didn't get too close. The brochure sure didn't mention any of this shit. So I guess I'd become what they wanted me to be. A killer. Some rent -a clown with a gun who puts holes in other bad guys. Well, that's what they had paid for, so in the end, that's what they got. Say what you want about Americans, but we understand capitalism. You buy yourself a product and you get what you pay for. And these chumps had paid for some angry gringo without the sensibilities to know right from wrong. I guess their plan was no more idiotic than mine, and I couldn't really fault them for losing faith in the Broncos' security detail. Here, just check this. We need to get out of the open. A barely recovering alcoholic and an unarmed pregnant woman. We were hardly a SEAL team. I put our life expectancy at five minutes. Hey. If we were lucky. If you can I sort of sidetracked a bit there talking about the dialogue, but Max's journey is something that isn't easily accomplished, given what's happened to him in his lifetime and fighting the addiction of the source, as he so calls it. It's tough trying to stop something that can do you more harm than good, especially when you're years into it. It just seems like a hole you can never get out of, and that's how Max begins, a broken mess of himself who just wants to die and be remembered for absolutely nothing because he's got no one that will remember him other than himself. By the halfway point, Max realizes that he wanted to die sober and not be a sweaty grey-haired mess, so he decides to shave his head and become Bold Pain, a different version of Max but one that would see him become a better person, even if he's still killing people along the way. Part of his change also comes from being in a midlife crisis with Max having all these manic depressive thoughts and a mental heaviness that always seemed to be on his shoulders everywhere he went. What makes this part great is that right after he does all of this, he heads straight into the favelas with a flower shirt and sunglasses, knowing that it is all uncharted territory for him. I don't think anyone in their right mind would do what Max does because he could die at any time, any moment, but hey, Max is very welcoming of death, so I don't blame him. By the end of it all, Max overcomes all the demons he faced in the beginning and his story ends with him walking out into the beach. There's probably a lot more I could say about Max's journey, the moment to moment dialogue moments and the hardships he faced with everything going on around him, but I don't want to spoil everything for those that haven't played it. In summary, a great story for Max and Max alone, not so great for everything and everyone else. Just before we touch base with the gameplay, I just wanted to talk about a little topic that's got me interested, and that's the idea of surviving. You could treat survival as a sort of theme in Max Payne 3 as well, but I always loved how Max would talk about different ways of dying and willing to accept death. Now, even though he's talking in retrospect, I could imagine him feeling the same sort of way if he was to say it as it was happening to, you know, him wanting to die and all. But regardless of what tense it's being spoken in, even though there are countless times where he could have died, he always tries his best to stay alive and I think part of that is because of the Rodrigo family. Primarily Fabiana since he's done something like this before in the past where he's saving fallen women. Outside of Fabiana, he's also trying his best to stay alive because I think a part of him knows that there is more to see in life than shooting men who all want a piece of the pie. The pie being Max for interrupting both the Ufe and the Crusher Preto. Two enemy factions slash groups that he goes up against. 
I just always found it odd because Max loves talking about death so much that he forces himself to keep going for specific reasons. And I feel like that's how most of us are in real life when we're struggling with a personal issue of our own. We strive to keep going as people because of a purpose and a reason. And it's the little things that help us better ourselves as humans and as people. And for Max, it was more about himself than anyone else since he fought so many demons and drank alcohol thinking it would fix his problems. He managed to come full circle by the end of it all and one could only use his story as a means of inspiration for their own self. I was searching for the shave cutscene on YouTube to listen to the dialogue again, and happened to find a comment of someone who got inspired by this cutscene, then stopped drinking after a month, and they say video games are bad for you. The Al Ray, I hope you'll remain in this way and continue to stay sober for the rest of your days. While the game's story may not be up to snuff like its predecessors and consist of cool comic strips, the gameplay is without a doubt the area that Rockstar put the most amount of effort into and it shows. The gunplay for starters is the best gunplay I've ever seen Rockstar do. It doesn't even come close to their newer games like Grand Theft Auto V and Red Dead Redemption 2. I think because of the linearity of it all and less space to work with, this gave the studio more time to work through the game, improving on aspects that may not stand out well. I'm not saying that GTA V or Red Dead 2 have bad gunplay because I think they're good in their own rights, given the amount of freedom and things to work with, but man, the gunplay in Max Payne 3 is just so freaking good. There's just something about the gunshots, moment-to-moment -moment sequences, and action-packed moments that just help bring everything together and make it mesh incredibly well. Max Payne 3's gameplay loop consists of Max moving through a linear area, interacting with objects, killing enemies, and using whatever cover is available to you, going from one place to another. The game also combines both cutscenes and gameplay, so you'll be going between watching and playing the game, which I personally like as it never felt like there was more than the other. There was enough gameplay to make up for the cutscenes and vice versa for cutscenes having enough screen time. There's also the bullet time mechanic where you can shoot dodge towards a direction, slowing down time and allowing you to kill your enemies with style. You can also slow time down manually by pressing a button, though You'll need to manage your stamina bar, which is regenerated by killing enemies when you're not using the mechanic. Shoot dodging will always put you into bullet time regardless of how much stamina you have, but it can also put you at risk if you don't kill your enemies before you land, as Max's old age has prevented him from being the beast he once was in the first two games, so it takes a while to get up. I like that you can also stay prone on your back, so you can choose to either get up or stay down until you think the coast is clear. It would have been annoying if it was automatic because there's a window where you won't be able to do anything while the animation is going so you have to be considerate of when you're going to get up after a shoot dodge. I also love that this game is all about precision as opposed to randomness in the first two games. Although the second game did sort of rectify this by allowing you to pop heads instead of having to deal with bloom and randomness of guns, often leading to some bullshit deaths. Thankfully this doesn't exist here. Precision is just as important as patience, because this game is hard and bullets hit you like a freaking truck in this game, so don't try to go all out guns blazing unless you memorize all the enemy spawns within the level. Since areas are so enclosed and tight, you need to be mindful of every door and section you go into as enemies could appear at places you wouldn't expect them to be. I've had a few deaths where as soon as I look away from a spot that I wouldn't think they'd spawn in, they'd end up spawning there and I'm out in the open, so I get whacked for it. Take your time and you'll find the game to not be as annoying or punishing as you may think it'll be if it's your first time playing. Painkillers are your main source of healing here, as there's no health regeneration and for the time that it came out, this was an interesting design choice given that most shooter games being made around that time had incorporated some sort of health regeneration system. But I understand that the intent was to remain faithful to the original games. You'll find them in first aid cabinets and on top of tables throughout, and they don't carry over to other levels. There's also golden gun parts to find that when you acquire 3 parts for a weapon, it turns into gold and has increased damage and ammo capacity. Nice to have for either another playthrough or for higher difficulties, which Max Payne has but is required to finish the game once first. The game's gore is something interesting too, as bullet impacts can be seen when hitting certain body parts like the head, and blood will be splattering out after hitting them in different parts of the body alongside the rage and euphoria engines providing different animations and ragdoll physics for characters. I don't think this level of gore came back into a Rockstar game until Red Dead 2 came out. You've got your usual assortment of weapons, from pistols to shotguns, some machine guns, rifles and launchers. Maskify enemies in a few ways. You can run around with one sidearm, do it with two of them, or be a smart man and pick up a trusty rifle from either the environment or a dead man's corpse. I played with all three playstyles and found the rifle playstyle to be the best. 
Although you will have moments where you may lose a rifle or your second sidearm, so keep that in mind. It's not a weapon holding machine either, so if you decide to dual wield your sidearms, you'll lose your rifle. I love that whenever Max has a rifle on him, he runs around and holds it with his left hand, which adds attention to detail and shows that he ain't no Doom Marine who can somehow hold 9 weapons at any given time. Ammo doesn't feel too limited, so you can spam your weapons away, though it is better to play a bit methodical and slow like I mentioned before, popping heads whenever you can. My only problem with the gameplay is that shoot dodging isn't perfect in every level of the game as there isn't enough space to safely go from one side to the other without being shot, even though you could just mitigate this by shooting the enemies before you land. Shoot dodging also cancels when you hit a wall, so it can screw you over. A big example of the shoot dodge shining is the famous airport level where the game gives you its biggest arena yet, allowing you to approach it in different ways. It also has the best song in the entire game playing in the background being Tears by Health. This is regarded as the best section in the game and I wish Max Payne 3 had more of these open moments, even just a few more to showcase its true potential. The level design in Max Payne 3 boasts variety with plenty of places to go to and things you'll be doing such as going to a nightclub, crossing the TRT River, flashback into Panama, the favelas, and for the older fans out there, Jersey. Every mission feels distinct in that you're always doing something different, even if you're killing people over and over again. Example, in the nightclub mission, you're tasked with protecting Giovanna from gang members whilst in a chopper, armed with a rifle and the laser sight. At the TRT River, you're chasing down Fabiana's captors in a boat, all while shooting opposing captors with a light machine gun. In Panama, you wake up from a bad hangover and find out that an army coup has seized the boat that you're protecting and fight your way out to try and get to a VIP. You even hop on a zipline and shoot soldiers along the way while using a soldier as a human shield. These are just some of the moments that Max Payne 3 has and there's plenty of them to go around. Thanks to the power of the Rage engine, this game has aged incredibly well, to no one's surprise for those who play Rockstar games, as they put criminal amounts of effort into making their games as detailed as possible. I would argue that it's black magic when they use this engine sometimes, but hey, the engine is named after the studio that created it. The game is well optimized, use of shadows and lighting is really good, especially in the nightclub, and can easily be run on any modern PC. I know GTA 4 may look a bit goofy at times, but even that game looks amazing for its age too. All the background music you're hearing in this video is from the game's soundtrack, and it was composed and written by a noise rock band known as Health. And when I first heard the game's music, I honestly thought that Rockstar made it. But looking back at that statement, I do not see Rockstar making music like this, given that the majority of the discography with their games consists of western sounds, modern pianos, and synths. Ivan Pavlovich, music director of Max Payne 3 said, we wanted to give Max a sound that is really an identifiable sound and Health as a band has an incredible sense of who they are and a very strong identity. When we saw Health perform, it was very clear that they were the ones who were going to be able to capture this. And boy, did they capture it. Every song in the soundtrack describes a feeling or a thought that Max is having and helps to signify the position that he's in. I mean, just look at the names of the songs. Some of my favorite songs include Max Panama, where, as described before, Max wakes up from a bad hangover with a group of people on the ship that he was supposed to protect and has no idea what the hell is going on or where anybody is. He just has to shoot his way out like he does in every situation that he seems to get himself into. Tears is a song used in the famous airport sequence, showing Max at his strongest and at a point where he's finally decided to leave the past behind and accept his family's deaths. It's also elaborated in the song's lyrics, as if his family is trying to talk to him. A testament to how good health is when trying to capture Max. Lastly is Pain, coincidentally named after his last name but spelled differently. Pain plays during one of Max's house moments where he continues to consume painkillers and drink the guilt away after losing another woman again. This is a critical moment for Max because he's essentially going through the same events again where he loses someone and just wants to bring Fabiana back to her family, no matter the cost. The soundtrack is just awesome man and Alf did an amazing job in establishing a sound for Max that, if we ever get a Max Payne 4, they should be first on the list to work on that game's soundtrack. The game's sound effects are also really good too. Gunshots sound heavy, the screams of soldiers after popping them in the head and seeing it go off in the cinematic camera is nothing short of satisfying, and yeah, it's just overall really solid. 
One of the complaints that I see people have with Max Payne 3 is the distortion and chromatic aberration effects using cutscenes. I personally didn't mind it throughout the whole game, but thought it could have been completely gone by the time Bold Payne comes around since he's not on drugs or alcohol. It just seems goofy to keep it in there, but they probably kept it to keep a consistent art and visual art style throughout the game. I also had a few bugs, mostly texture and object related as the game decided to not load the objects in for whatever reason. A quick exit to the main menu and continuing the game fixed this though. Nothing else to report on the bug side aside from these. I also love that Rockstar kept the same comic book style that the original games were known for and decided to replicate that but with cutscenes instead. It doesn't happen in all parts of the game, but I just thought it's a nice attention to detail from them and I gotta commend them for showing certain sections of the game like this. I did have a bullshit moment where, on the zipline in the Panama mission, I had to restart at that moment in time after dying as soon as I landed and for some reason, I kept dying, even though the sequence played the exact same way when I first did it. I wasn't sure if this was a bug or not, but exiting to the main menu and loading up seemed to fix it. There's a good amount of replayability thanks to the arcade mode, which is acquired after completing the game once. There's a few cool game modes and ways to make the levels more fun and exciting. I didn't dive into this too much, but it's there for those who want to replay the levels and get some achievements. You can also change Max's outfit in there as well. Max Payne 3 was and is an absolute blast to play through, having lots of fun moments, funny one-liners, and awesome gameplay. It's mind-blowing how this game was marketed in the frickin' UEFA Champions League final on top of the usual Rockstar marketing campaigns they do, and only managed to sell 4 million copies just one year after its release. I guess the world didn't want Max Payne anymore, which is why I say that Max Payne 3 is criminally underrated, and in its own right, it is. Controversial character change, completely different scenery, use of development and delays, the evidence is all there. But you can't deny that Rockstar gave it their all to produce the best Max Payne game they could with what they had, and despite the flaws and problems, it is still a fantastic third-person linear action game, and a game that we typically don't see in today's world of gaming, as single-player games tend to go for the open-world approach. I highly recommend getting this game on a sale, as you can get it dirt cheap when it does. As always, if you made it to the end of the video, Thanks for watching. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.